Hi. Welcome to this example on using functions. In this example, I'm going to show you how we can calculate the range, domains, and inverse functions. So, I've got an example here then that if f of x equals x squared minus 1, x being any real number but greater than or equal to 0, we're asked to find the range of f of x and in part 2 find the inverse function stating the domain. Now to find the range of any function what I would always suggest is draw the graph. So if we sketch some axes here then to draw the graph of x squared minus 1 what I do is think of the graph of x squared you should know that it's a parabola passing through the origin. Then all I've got to do is now take away 1 from the values. And what that would do is to translate this graph, it would pull it down basically one unit parallel to the y-axis. So it's going to look something like that. All right. Now, that would cross the y-axis here at the point where x is naught and that comes to minus 1. If you substitute x equals naught, f of naught is minus 1. So this graph crosses the y-axis at minus 1. Now that's all very well if we're looking at the graph of f of x equals x squared minus 1 for all real values, but we're not. We've got a restricted domain here. x is greater than or equal to 0. So what that means is that as far as the graph goes we don't need this stretch of the curve because we only want x greater than or equal to zero. So in other words we need to take this part out. So we just remove that from there and we've got this part of the graph. So in other words when it comes to the range the range of values now for x greater than or equal to naught are all the y values that you would get. And the y values would be from minus 1 upwards. Okay, So we can say in answer to part 1 that the range of f of x is such that f of x is greater than or equal to minus 1. We want all the values up here. Alright, now when it comes to part 2, when we've got to find the inverse function, what you need to do is say let x equal this function here and you replace any x's you have here with y's. So you'd say let x equal y squared minus 1. What we need to do is rearrange this and make y the subject. So if I add 1 to both sides, I end up with y squared equals x plus 1. And then I need to square root this, so I'd have y equals the square root of x plus 1. But when you square root anything, you've always got plus or minus. Now the question is, when it comes to writing down what the inverse function is, is the inverse function going to be plus the square root of x plus 1 or is it going to be minus the square root of x plus 1? Well, what we can do to answer that question is go back to the graph because what you should know is that if this is f of x, we just write this in that this is the graph of y equals f of x just mark that in there. What you should know is that the inverse function to this one is always a reflection in the line y equals x. And the line y equals x is this diagonal through here. So if I was to draw that on, okay, something like this, all right, let's just mark that in as y equals x. Then if I reflect this curve in the line y equals x, 
then this point here will go over to there and that will be at minus one zero this point here would be reflected over to here okay and that point by the way let's just have a look what it is okay for this curve this is the point when y is naught and when y is naught x squared minus one equals naught leading to x squared equals one and so x would equal the square root of one which would be one here and so this point would get mirrored over to here and the curve would look something like this. In fact, I'll draw it in for you. It would look like that. So this point would be minus 1 and this point here would be at 1. And the question is then, if this is the inverse function, y equals f to the minus 1 of x, then is it the plus root of x plus 1 or the minus root of x plus 1? Well, it's very easy to see now because, for instance, if we let x equal 0, for instance, in here, if we let x equal 0, you get 0 to have 1, which is 1. And so the square root of 1 is either plus or minus 1. Well, you can see that we want plus 1. So, in fact, the function that we need is that, therefore, the inverse function of x is the plus version for this that is the square root of x plus 1. Now when it comes to finding the domain of this function the domain goes from this point here outwards. All right? So the domain extends from minus 1 upwards. So we can say that the domain of the inverse function, domain of the f to the minus 1 of x, is such that x is greater than or equal to minus 1. Now, it's worth pointing out, by the way, that always the domain of one function becomes the range of the inverse and vice versa. So you can see that in this question, when we found the range of f of x, remember it was greater than or equal to minus 1, the range of f of x becomes the domain of the inverse function. And you can see here it is. All right. So that brings us now to the end of this example on functions, finding the range, domain and inverse functions.